Hello, fellow movie crusaders, and welcome to another episode of Sean's Movie Crusades. My name is Sean Wasserkrug, and today we are going over the top 25 films of 2019, and we are now doing the top 10 films of the year. Uh, if you guys were previously watching, you guys got to see the list from 11 through 25, which I'll pop that back up here real quick so you guys can see what the uh, films were. These films are the top 10 films of 2019. This was a fantastic year in terms of 2019. There were so many movies that deserved to be on this list. It was a very hard list to make. Um, thus why I went to 25 this year instead of 10 with five, you know, uh, honorable mentions. We decided to do 25. Um, like I said, these are my personal opinions. These are not the ratings for the movie Crusaders. Um, we will probably be doing a separate episode at some point with their top five or even top 10 movies of 2019. These are specifically mine and mine alone. Like I said in the previous video, this ranking is not be uh, rated in terms of the highest rated films of the year in terms of my reviews, but a mix of that plus overall enjoyment and rewatchability. So certain films like Marriage Story, which ended up at number 12 this on, on this list, was rated in the top 10 for me in terms of overall movies, uh, but ended up down at 12 in overall terms of just enjoyable and rewatchability of the film. Um, so this, this is my top 10 films of 2019. I hope you guys enjoy the list. Uh, spoiler warning for at least some of these, I will be going over some actual scenes in the film. So if you have not seen any of these films, go out of your way to make sure to check these films out for one, but two, be careful as these films come up because some of these might be a spoiler. If you want to jump around to certain numbers to see exactly what movies are ranked where, feel free to check those out on the links below in terms of the timestamps. Um, now, in terms of the movies that are on this list as well as with the 11 through 25, only one of these movies has been out less than a week or about a week. Everything else has been out for months or is already out on digital and disc. So, like I said, here's your spoiler warning. And on that one movie that's only been out a week, which if you guys don't figure out what it is yet, based off of that, <laughs> well, then, okay. Um, I, will, I, I will do my best not to spoil anything on that. Uh, but, yeah, let's go ahead and jump on in to the top 10 films of 2019. Coming in at number 10 is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Um, now this film, uh, like I said, so good, so heartfelt, uh, such an incredibly well done performance as Mr. Rogers done by Tom Hanks. Thus why, why he got the supporting actor nomination for the Oscars. I think Matthew Rees or, or Rise, however you want to say his name. Um, I think he did a very solid job as the, as the main character of the film. Cause a lot of people got it misinterpreted with what this film was about. A lot of people thought this was a mr rogers movie but what this film actually is about is it's about a writer um by the name of a uh, lloyd vogel who's actually doing a piece on mr rogers and then um it's about the story and the life of lloyd and how mr rogers affected his life once he met him so tom hanks as mr rogers is not the lead character in this film he's a supporting character and uh i actually liked it that way because it it gave us a an outlook of someone who's kind of jaded and someone who's trying to find the negative to Mr. Rogers and just wasn't able to pull it off. Um, I thought Matthew Rees did a great job working uh, hand in hand with Tom Hanks, especially in those more um, tense scenes between the two characters. Um, I thought Chris Cooper did a great job as a, uh, as a uh, Lloyd's estranged father, Jerry, um, like I said, this, this, this movie was incredibly heartfelt. I love the, the director's decision of when doing kind of the transition sequences in the film, it showed the old school timey, uh, like Mr. Rogers, like set kind of thing. Uh, when like they would go on planes and they would travel, you would see the old school set of Mr. Rogers, like playland and not just show those, like, you know, those generic scenes of a plane taking off and a plane landing. Um, there's a beautiful scene in this film, which is one of my favorites of the year. I'm just going to call it the diner scene, uh, where Mr. Rogers basically tells you to take a full minute, just sit there and think about the people most important to you, AKA like your parents. Um, and, and just think about them. And it's a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful scene. Uh, I got emotional in a few parts while watching this. 
Um, like I said, that's easily why it's in my top 10 of 2019 uh, based on the performances and how the film made me feel overall. Going to number nine, this movie ended up staying in the top 10 throughout the entire year after its debut. Uh, it was number one for a while, but then it inevitably dropped down to the number nine spot, and that is Toy Story 4. Say what you will about Toy Story 4. There are a lot of haters out there for this movie, but I loved Toy Story 4. I thought it was a beautiful well done story uh, and potential final story of Tom Hanks's Woody. Um, yes, Buzz was not a big focal point in this film. Yes, the rest of the Toy Story characters were not a big focal point in this film. I don't care. This is a story about Woody and his life and him trying to finally uh, come to terms with him not being a, a someone's toy or top toy anymore because andy's gone and bonnie doesn't treat him like the favorite toy he she treats jesse and all these other characters and and woody kind of has to learn to kind of take that back seat as the leader and it was him kind of that story of him kind of coming to terms with that and figuring out what's the next step for his life i thought it was a beautifully well done story by pixar um the the cast in this film the new characters because we got a lot of new characters we got key and peel um, playing uh, Bunny and uh, Bunny and Ducky. We got one of my favorite villains of 2019 in terms of Gabby Gabby, done, voiced by Christina Hendricks. I thought that scene where we finally, because like when we first see her, her motivations are very dark. She wants, you know, Woody's voice box, but then when she actually, like, how many movies where they go, well, let the villain explain their plan and not them, and then after you hear the explanation, go, oh. Like, no, that's that's a hundred percent plausible. Help her out, Woody, instead of going, No, she's the villain, don't help her. In this movie, you a hundred percent buy into Gabby Gabby's reasonings for what she's doing, and you want her to succeed. You want her to win at the end of the day. And when Woody actually does help her out, and then you get that moment where she finally gets picked up by the the, the uh, child and then thrown back away. One of the most heartbreaking scenes of 2019, in my opinion. I literally gasped when I saw that in theaters the first time. I got emotional watching it. Um, Tony Hale is Forky. I don't know how the hell they made this work. Because every trailer they showed of Forky, Forky looked annoying and was like, this is going to kill the franchise. But somehow they made it work. Uh, Annie Potts returning as Bo Peep. Um, she did a fantastic job. Keanu Reeves as Duke Kaboom, I thought was great. Um, like I said, there's so much to love about this film. I get why certain people are, uh, you know, negative towards it because it doesn't have Buzz and Jesse and all them in it a whole lot. But like I said, I don't care. Woody has always been the main character to the Story Story franchise. This was his story. It was his journey. And I thought they did a fantastic job. And if they don't make another Toy Story film, which I kind of hope they don't, um, then it was a beautiful ch ending chapter to a phenomenal franchise that went through my entire childhood all the way up to today. And that is why it is number nine on the best of 2019. Coming in at number eight is uh, a movie that was really intriguing, but I wasn't sure how I was going to like it. But it ended up being one of my favorites of the year, and that is Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Uh, now, I've always been a fan of, like, the whodunit kind of films, um, but they really hadn't been doing that a whole lot lately. Now, yes, you, you do get something like like uh, the British versions of Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, but it wasn't quite like a whodunit, just more like a generic, like, here's a mystery, Sherlock's going to figure it out in the last, like, 10, 15 minutes, and there we go. Whereas, like, this one, you do the whole... You got the whole house full of suspects. You've got the one inspector, and he's got to interview him and knock them down one by one. And that's what this movie basically is. And I think it has a phenomenal cast. Easily probably one of the best casts. Uh, casts. I keep it sounds like I'm saying cats, um, which is nowhere near this on this list. Um, it's got one of the best casts in in 2019. Uh, we got Daniel Craig, phenomenal as um as a uh, oh, what's his name um. Benoit Blanc, uh, and I can't. I'm so excited to hear that they're going to continue with his character in future films. Because when, if you guys go back to my review, when I saw this, I go, I want a Benoit Blanc 
uh, film series. Like he's finishing with James Bond, have him continue with this character. And it looks like that is what they're potentially going to do. I thought Daniel Craig did a great job as doing a uh, foghorn, leghorn kind of, Oh, 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 kind of voice and i at first it was very corny and, and and funny but eventually he sunk into it and he really did a fantastic job with it uh anna de armas i thought she could have earned um a lead actress or supporting actress depending on how you want to play her in this in this um i thought she did a fantastic job as marta chris evans as ransom uh jamie lee curtis as linda michael shannon as walt the list goes on and on don johnson tony collette the keith stanfield Christopher Plummer, Catherine Langford, Jaden Martell. The list is ridiculous of how great this cast is. Each character is quirky and crazy in their own mind. They're all uniquely different uh, based on their characters. Um, the way it was shot, the visually stunning um, uh, visuals of this film, the mystery where you think you know the answer after the first 20 minutes, but as the film goes, the story just keeps unraveling and unraveling to the inevitable um, reveal slash conclusion to the end. And by the time this movie ends, you're just having a great time. Uh, and that is why Knives Out ends up at the number eight spot in 2019. Um, or uh, seven spot. Sorry, number seven spot. Oh, wow. I totally skipped number nine. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, okay. Uh, normally I would, I would edit this um but we skipped two, we went through two whole movies and i talked a lot on toy story so i'm not gonna do that um number nine <laughs> on the list i can't believe i totally skipped over number nine um number nine on the list for 2019 was little women uh little women that was a movie that i was not expecting to enjoy um and it was a movie that i wasn't expecting to even watch i I had heard about Little Women. I've seen Little Women in terms of like how it's portrayed, but I never watched any of the films. Uh, and then I saw the previews with this cast with uh, Shosha Ronan, Florence Pugh, Emma Watson, uh, um, uh, not Jacob Tremblay, um, Timothy Chalamet, and then directed by Greta Gerwig. And I was like, wow, this actually looks like it could potentially be good. And so I went out of my way to see it around Christmas, and I was blown away by how much I enjoyed this film. I thought it was a great, uh, great performances from Sosha Rona, Florence Pugh, who ended up getting an Oscar. They both got Oscar nominations, actually. Uh, I, I love the way it looked. I love the way it felt. Uh, it, it felt good. Like you, you laugh, you cried, you felt bad, you felt you, you, you had fun. Like you love the relationship between these four girls. Um, once you got used to the time the time uh, mixture of it between going from present to past and back and forth. You pretty much had to pay attention to the girl's hairstyles to know where you were in the timeline. But I think Greta Gerwig did a fantastic job with this film. And uh, it was one of those that you went in to me, I went in with lowest expectations because of what the film was about. And, you know, I was holding out hope that the cast would win me over and not only did the cast win me over, but the story won me over and the direction won me over. And that is why it was number nine on the list. And Knives Out was number seven. Um, going to number six on the list. Now, this is this is number one or at least in the top three of a lot of people's lists. But it's number six for me, which is not a bad thing. A lot of people hear that this is my number six movie and they're like, how dare you? And, but... It, it just is. Number six out of how many films I see in a year is a huge, huge thing. It's not a bad thing at all that it's number six on the list. Um, but coming in at number six is Bong Joon Ho's Parasite. Um, like I said, and, and like I've said in all my videos, I'm not going to talk about this film. I'm not going to talk about the plot. I'm not going to talk about anything about it because the best thing about this film is going in with no expectations and not knowing anything about the movie and just watching it as it is. And I'm not, I'm going to do the same thing here. The cast who I'm not going to name because I'm going to butcher every single one of their names. And I want to respect them. The cast, both the rich family and the poor family, fantastic cast through everyone. The way Bong Joon Ho shot this film, gorgeous. The way he kind of turns this film from, uh, a a kind of um, intellectual con 
to a potential thriller, almost into a horror aspect. The way this movie flips itself on its head and goes from watching it in one respect to a completely different respect is masterful. Bong Joon-ho deserves all the recognition he's getting. He deserves all the award nominations that he's getting. The cast deserves a lot, but they're not really getting anything, which sucks. But Parasite is easily one of the best films of 2019. Uh, it kept me enthralled the entire time while watching it. Uh, and that is why, like I said, it is easily on the list. It comes in at number six for me personally because the, the five movies I have ahead of it, I just like a little bit more. Um, but it was a near-perfect film, and that is why it is at number six on the 2019's top ten. Coming in at number five is Joker. Now, I know a lot of people have started to sour on this movie because of the, the uh, like the award buzz and everything through it, but this movie is freaking amazing. Yes, it is not a movie that you would watch over and over and over again like a Dark Knight with Heath Ledger's Joker. Um, cause this movie is a very demented kind of film and it's not an enjoyable film by any means, but it is still a film that is easily one of the best performances of the year with Joaquin Phoenix. And that's why he's probably going to win the Oscar for best actor. And rightfully so he deserves it. He lost a ton of weight. He basically almost went insane on his own right to try to play this character off. And Joaquin did a masterful job. Uh, playing uh, Arthur in this film. Um, and the one thing that works in this movie is that you feel for Arthur. Like, he's he's inevitably going to become the Joker, which is this horrible, evil person. But you feel for Arthur in this film. You, you feel bad for him. You feel sorry for him. And even when he does horrible things, you almost kind of want to find a way to justify what he did. So that way you can still like his character until, it, you know, he, he goes for, too far. Um, but Joaquin did a fantastic job. Todd Phillips did an amazing job directing this film. I wasn't really giving him the benefit of the doubt from his previous films. I don't know how he pulled it off, but he put on a stellar um, film uh, with Joaquin. Robert De Niro did great in his small role as Murray Franklin. Zazie beats a Sophie did good. Francis Conroy is Penny Fleck. I thought did really good. <coughs> um, I there's, there's so many just great moments in this movie from the whole Murray interview at the end, which I've watched that scene. I can't remember how many times just over again, just watching Joaquin's performance. Uh, and then just that whole sequence thereafter to, I, I loved how, how Joaquin did this thing where he's Arthur and he's kind of lets the Joker take over and his body just kind of starts morphing and changing kind of like the Joker is like a kind of like split with John Ma James McAvoy. When he turns into the beast, you see his body kind of morph and change. You kind of see that kind of in a sense with Arthur with Joaquin is when he lets the Joker come out and take full form. You see his body shift and, and adjust and kind of almost like the Joker is completely taken over every limb and aspect of his body. And Joaquin did that beautifully. Uh, he, there's multiple times in the movie where you see that happen and it looks incredible every time and very uneasy. Um, the one scene in the apartment with his two buddies. Uh, I love that scene. That's in terms of chaos and hecticness and, and just not knowing what's going to happen in that moment was, was a great scene. There's so many amazing moments in this movie. Uh, like I said, it's a depressing film. It's definitely not a, a feel good movie. Um, but it was, a, it was a masterclass in acting by Joaquin Phoenix. He deserves the best actor nomination for this. Uh, and that is why it is at number five on the list. Going to number four is Ford v. Ferrari. Um, James Mangold, I thought put a, uh, directed a fantastic film with for this film i am not a car guy uh i'm one of those guys that they go what kind of car is that and i was like a red one a truck uh i don't know it, that one <laughs> like i i can't i can't point to a car and i i can't know what year make a model it is i'm just not a car guy but this movie made me love cars i love the performances with christian bale and Matt Damon, John Barathol, uh, uh, Katarina Balfrey, who played Molly Miles, uh, Bale's um, uh, wife in the movie. Josh Lucas was the the best villain in 2019. I've never wanted to punch someone more than Josh Lucas's uh, Leo Beebe. 
Uh, Noah Juve did a solid job as Peter Miles. Um, Tracy Letts as Henry Ford, uh, the <coughs> Henry Ford the second. Uh, there's one scene with him in the film when he goes on a test drive with uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon's Carol Shelby. That's one of my favorite scenes of 2019. That moment in the car after the test drive was a beautiful scene uh, between those two. Uh, it's one of my favorite moments of the movie. The whole racing, the way Mangold shot the racing, how he got the different angles, like the low to the ground angles, and really made you feel the speed and the and the, the marathon of these races that uh, Ken Miles had to go through. Um, the characters, like I loved these characters. I loved watching Bale and Damon work side by side. Uh, I, I love the way it was shot, the way the film happened, like the whole way from the from beginning to end. I enjoyed every aspect of this movie. It's one of my favorite films of the year. If you guys have not seen Ford v Ferrari, definitely go out of your way to check it out. Um, cause it is easily one of the best films of the year, which is why it is at the number four spot coming in at number three is that movie I was talking about. It's only a week old, uh, for everyone. Um, that's not a reviewer. And that is 1917. If you want a masterclass of how a film should look, should be shot, go no further than Roger Deakins in 1917. This film is freaking incredible. It's it's this this tale of these two soldiers who have to travel a certain distance to stop and deliver this message to stop this, this, uh, this attack by dawn in order to save 1600 men's lives is, is utterly amazing. Um, it is in my opinion, the best film of the year in terms of the, how it was done, the way it was shot, the way everything works. If we're going by just complete whole of how a film should be made, this is easily the best film of the year. The reason why it is not my number one is because the two films in front of it have more emotional weight of on them uh, for me, and I felt more out of those two films than I did this one. But this film, to me, is easily the best picture of the year, which is why it should win Best Picture at the Oscars. I think um, Sam Mendes deserves Best Director nomination, or deserves the win, personally. Um, I think the, the two lead actors in this, who are relative unknowns for people who don't watch TV... Uh, Dean Charles Chapman and George uh, McKay, I think, did a great job as the, as the two soldiers who were on the mission. You have great cameos from other uh, bigger name actors who I'm not going to say because I'm trying to keep it a uh, spoiler free. But the way this film was shot is freaking incredible. It puts you in the, the shoes of these two characters as you are going side by side with them, sometimes behind them, sometimes in front of them through this journey as they go through no man's land. They go through... A, a worn, torn town or uh, on a river. That river scene is breathtaking. Um, you were going through the trials and tribulations with these two characters. You were in the thick of it with them the whole way through. And it is easily one of the most amazing movie experiences I've ever had. Uh, and it is just, like I said, utterly incredible. And like I said, the best film overall of 2019. But it is number three on my top tw my top 25 of 2019. Going to number two, <clears throat> my number one and number two are literally like this. It's one, one A. Um, I, I, this movie could easily be my number one. It kind of is my number one, but I'm, I'm going to put it in my number two slot. Um, we've had a non-spoiler review. We've had a spoiler review with Jay Burns. We have talked about this movie at nauseum. <laughs> um, and that is Jojo Rabbit. This movie um, completely took me by surprise. I was not at the time a huge Taika Waititi fan because the only thing I knew him for at the time was Thor Ragnarok, which most of you know, I'm not a huge fan of Thor Ragnarok. Um, I'm also not a fan of Nazis. Big, big shocker there. Who is? Um, but this movie did one thing and it made, it basically made fun of Nazis in a satirical way. It didn't like go out of its way to po poke fun at them. Like, yes, they do say stupid things in this, but they still made them more people than than caricatures of themselves this cast is amazing i think everyone almost everyone in this movie deserved the nomination for the performances roman griffin davis as jojo put on a phenomenal performance for for someone of his age thomas and mckenzie as elsa was incredible scarlett johansson got the nomination 
as Rosie, and she rightfully deserves it, and she should win, in my opinion, but she probably won't. Um, Taika Waititi as Adolf. Uh, Sam Rockwell as Captain Klenzeldorf. I think he should have deserved a supporting nomination, but he didn't get it. Um, Rebel Wilson, I'm not a huge fan of hers, but I liked her in this as Fraulein Rom. Alfie Allen as Finkel, I thought it was hilarious. Stephen Merchant had a great moment with uh, as a uh, Dirt. Archie Yates is Yorkie. Everyone wants a best friend like Yorkie, and if you're if you say you don't, you're lying. This movie has heart. This movie rips your heart out and crushes it at one moment. Uh, literally outside of Toy Story 4's Gabby Gabby scene, the one there's one scene, and I know I said spoilers, but I'm gonna try my best not to say it. But oh, everyone knows the scene I'm talking about. I was watching it and audibly out loud gasped when this moment happened. And instead of Taika shying away from you, he made you live in that moment. He made you breathe that moment for a while. And uh, just the the emotional weight that this scene did um, shocked me. I literally had tears rolling down my face during this scene. Um, it's funny. It's heartfelt. It makes you angry at certain points. At certain points, I wanted to punch JoJo in the face because he was a little shit. Uh, but then at the next point, you understood his fear and and what he was trying to do. Adolf, who never thought I'd say this, Adolf Hitler was hilarious in this movie for halfway through the film. The way they shot this in terms of a, an imaginary friend who was supportive like a best friend and then turned into this, this kind of uh, clingy, um, clingy kind of character I thought was incredibly well done. Um, Sam Rockwell's performance as Captain Klenzeldorf you know, starting in one way and going to one way at by the end of the film, uh, his his final scene, heartbreaking and amazing at the same time. I can talk about this movie for hours, which we did on a spoiler review. It is easily my favorite film of the original film of the year outside of 1917. Um, if you guys have not seen Jojo Rabbit, I urge you all 100% go out of your way to see Jojo Rabbit. It is back in theaters now because it is a Best Picture nominee. So if it is in your theaters... Go see Jojo Rabbit. You will not be disappointed. It is easily one of my favorite coming-of-age films of all time. Like I said back in the previous video, Booksmart is really great. But uh, Jojo Rabbit's the best coming-of-age film of 2019, if not one of the best coming-of-age films ever. Uh, I can I can just keep talking about how much I love Jojo Rabbit, but it comes in at the number two or 1A position for 2019. Finally, number one. Uh, this is no shocker for anyone who watches the channel. It's been in the number one slash two spot the entire year, and it's going to be my number one, and it's going to be Avengers Endgame. Uh, this movie is, in terms of what it accomplished, it is a masterpiece. To take 20 films, 10 ye or 11 years at this point, 11 years, 20 films, and make it this beautiful uh, beautiful, just, just, this, this, I, I, I still don't know how the Russo brothers pulled it off, but to take this film and make everything that we wanted out of this movie, uh, I was a, I was a bubbly mess during this film. I, I, there was so much awesomeness <laughs> happening that I was getting sensory overload watching this. And with, with the Avengers assemble scene, the first time I watched it in theaters, the first time seeing it, I was just crying profusely not because i was sad but because there was so much greatness happening on screen that my body just couldn't keep it in anymore i was so overwhelmed by everything happening in this film that i just had to let it all out and that scene was one of my favorite scenes of all time it was easy obviously my favorite scene of 2019 performances of robert downey jr chris evans everyone in this film puts on a stellar, amazing performances throughout. Um, I cried at least four or five times throughout this film. It's funny. It's got great action sequences. The whole last hour is insane. Um, like I said, I could talk about this all day, just like Jojo Rabbit. We did a three and a half hour spoiler review about this movie that you guys can check out on the channel. Um, this is, like I said, the, is it, Technically, the best film of the year, no, that goes to 1917. But in terms of 2019, this is my favorite film of the year because, like I said, it took 20 movies, 10, uh, 10 to 11 years, and turned it all and made it work. And like I said, it is a masterpiece. They probably will not be able to pull this off again. I know that they're going to try it again probably in 10 years with the next set of films. 
but there's no way they're going to be able to capture and um, perform what they were able to do with Avengers Endgame. This movie deserves to be acknowledged. It deserves um, to have all the records that it broke. It deserves even more because the Oscars are basically not giving it any of its due. It deserves to be recognized. And I don't say it deserves to win, but it deserves to be recognized for what it was able to do. And if, if all else fails, it, it, it that's why it is my number one. It's like I said, it's, it's a near perfect uh, film for what it was able to do. Yes, there are certain things in the film that I'm not a fan of, but you know what? No movie's perfect in my in, in every, anyone's eyes. Um, but I loved this movie, and that is why it is my number one of 2019. I'm sure it's a lot of people's number one, or at least in their top three of 2019. If you're a fan of comic book movies, if you're a fan of epic stories, then you can't look any further than Avengers Endgame. This movie, like I said, 20, 20 films, 10 plus years, and it culminates into this final movie, even though it's not the last one because it continued on with Spider-Man and everything else. But the way it finished off this ch final chapter of the stories that we've seen so far, nothing short of a masterpiece by the Russo brothers and the MCU. And that is why it is number one on the list. And that is it. That is the top 10 of 2019 for Sean's Movie Crusades. Uh, so going back to the top 10, um, we'll set, we'll do the order in correct this time, correct order this time. Uh, coming in at number 10 was A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Number 9 was Little Women. 8 was Toy Story 4. 7 was Knives Out. 6 was Parasite. 5 is Joker. 4, 4V Ferrari. 3, 1917. 2, Jojo Rabbit with number one being Avengers Endgame. I hope you guys enjoyed this list. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys feel like this list is worth sharing, go ahead and hit that share button. But most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on Sean's Movie Crusades. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Coming up next, we do have two reviews coming up, potentially with Doolittle. Yikes. Uh, and uh, Bad Boys for Life, which is one of my top uh, most anticipated films of 2020. So be on the lookout for those reviews as well as many, many videos and uh, that are going to be popping up here over the next year with 2020. And here's hoping that 2020's list is just as good as 2019 because this is one of the best years in film in recent memory. And I cannot wait to see what 2020 has uh, in store for us. And I hope you guys stay tuned with Sean's Movie Crusades for throughout 2020 with all the movies that are going to be coming out. We'll have all the reviews. We'll have uh, some movie topics with the rest of the Movie Crusaders. Be on the lookout for that. We have the top 100 uh, films of Kurt Kowalkowski or The Trial of Kurt Kowalkowski is what we're going to call it. we got so much in store for you guys here on this channel, and I hope you guys subscribe and stay tuned. And until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders.